Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Ada. I come in to do um, a Bible study on iniquity. I did part one about a week ago and I'm back with part two. Now for those of you all who haven't watched part one before you watch this one, you may want to go back and watch part one. But anyway, um, in the first video, I discussed iniquity and according to the Bible, what iniquity mean. I discussed idolatry um, and I discussed how to, how, and I just talked about how we can not, you know, be deceived or tricked by the enemy because those of you who are Christians know that we have an enemy, enemy of our soul whether we want to believe it or not but if you've given your life to Christ and you're born again you have a real enemy that walks among you that want to deceive you so with that being said without further ado now I want to clarify um, some things that maybe wasn't that clear on the first video uh, I don't come to bring condemnation and this video is not for everyone. It's only for those who've been born again and have a relationship with Christ and have some spiritual understanding or for those who are seeking a relationship with Christ and who are being led by the Spirit. Because we know now under the new covenant that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus that are led by the Spirit of God, not by their flesh. So... My goal is not to bring condemnation because, first of all, I want to really clarify how much God loves us, all of us, his creation, whether you're born again or not. I want to emphasize his love for you and for me. And it is this, his desire that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. And that's scriptural. So my goal is just for us to be aware of idolatry modern day idolatry and how we can fall into idolatry without you know being mindful because sometimes we get busy and I live in our lives um, we start good with God uh, we're running the race strong we get distracted and we think we're okay and before you know it we're caught up chasing what the world chases because we are human but I want to say to you today that if you're born again, if you're seeking God, uh, He loves you first and foremost. And as I talked about on the first video, iniquity is a lifestyle of sin. And it's a condition of where one practices sin. And according to First John, no one that's born of God can continue a lifestyle a sin or a lifestyle that opposes God's law that's opposite of God or antichrist you know to clarify if you truly been born again it is impossible to continue in that lifestyle but that doesn't say we won't fall into it and um, because the enemy is deceitful but we have the Holy Spirit there to guide us back to the path so the scriptures I used the last time for this Bible study was Psalms 25 11 for thy name's sake O Lord pardon my iniquity and that was David and I'm assuming that he was very repentant after his um, after he strayed from the Lord that he wasn't even aware when he got caught up with Bathsheba he wasn't even aware how far he strayed from the Lord and you would think okay the man committed adultery he had Uriah Merlin why wasn't he aware well, first of all, David didn't have the sin conscience that when you walk with God, there is, he, there's no condemnation. And he doesn't beat us down when we do things. And that's not to condone what David did because God did send the prophet Nathan to make David aware that he had transgressed. So what I'm saying is when you have a relationship with God, he's not always there tapping you on the back for every little thing you do because he knows you're human and he knows you're imperfect. But when we start to stray away from God, it makes it easier for something else to get our attention in the world. And David had strayed a little bit. He, God wasn't 
on his mind at this time. And a lot of times, if he's not on our mind, and if we're not being mindful of what we put in our hearts and in our minds on a daily basis, it's possible. So that's the balance. But in this scripture, David is repenting. And he realizes that he's strayed. Um, because when Nathan confronted David about his sin with Bathsheba and Uriah, David, um, he, he wanted to know who was the man who had taken someone's little ewe lamb. And I will, I'll put the um, scriptures in the bottom where you can go back and read the story of David and Bathsheba. I'll put all that at the bottom. But anyway, for those who, you know, are in the word, you kind of know the story. But for those who may be seeking, I will put the link below um, or the Bible scripture below so you can go back and read it. But I said all that to say this. David was considered a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he was repentant. It wasn't his works of the flesh. It was his repentance of heart that made him a man after God's own heart. So I say to us today that we have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us not to make uh, sin our lifestyle we may stray from the lord we may do things that um he that grieves his heart but under the new covenant um we can always come back and so we just have to be mindful that jesus warns us in matthew 24 12 that uh because of iniquity in the last days that the love of many shall walk where it's cold. Well, that tells me it's going to be people that stray and actually practice iniquity because they're going to be desensitized. And why they're desensitized is because sometimes what we put before our eyes, uh, and we're not under law, people, we're under grace. And God doesn't tell us, don't. there's not a bunch of do's and don'ts, but there is that free will that he gave us that where we can choose what we want we know when something we have discernment and we know when something is not good for us to constantly partake of or something that we're watching all the time or something that are people we even fellowshipping with all the time you know because friendship with the world is enmity toward god and the corner mind of the mind without the spirit of god is hostile toward god so this iniquity iniquity that Jesus is talking about, we're going to see a lot of that in the last days because God's people are going to become desensitized. A lot of us are going to stray because we're desensitized. Will we stay away? No, because it's impossible for us to continue if we have the Holy Spirit in us. Now, I'll tell you what can happen. When the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is drawing a person, their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears is open, but they have not yet received what Christ has done from them. So a lot of times, these people who haven't really received may think, okay, I have a relationship because you understand spiritual things. But it's hard for you to come away from some things because you really haven't received what he's done for you. Because, you know, for whatever reason, I've seen it. And until you receive what he's done for you, you can't be sealed. And the Holy Spirit, it seals us to the day of redemption. He keeps those who want to be kept. He seals you. You become his child. So, how do we guard against becoming heart, heart of heart? By renewing our mind. And how do we renew our mind? Well, we re renew our mind by reading God's word. And asking him for the grace to read it and to understand it. Because we can't do all of this apart from him. It has to be a, um, it has to be a, his grace. Because we can do nothing apart from him. So, what I submit to you today, guys, is that iniquity is a lifestyle practice. It hardens your heart. It hard, then that's why the world is the world. Because, and when I say the world, I'm just talking about those people who haven't, who doesn't have a relationship with the Lord yet. That's when I say the world. Uh, that is those people who doesn't have a relationship. And that relationship is available to all who would come. Uh, to all who the Holy Spirit pulls and guides and brings to him. Because it's by his spirit that people 
or drawn to the things of the Lord and the, uh, and to God. But anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. That iniquity will abound, the love of men will wax cold. And how did all this get started? It got started in the garden. Uh, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, God had given them clear instructions. And I talked about this a little bit in the first video of what to eat and what they couldn't eat and what they could partake in and what they couldn't partake in. And so the enemy or the serpent, Satan, whoever you want to call him, was subtle. And so he came to Eve in the form of a serpent. And apparently at that time, serpents could walk. And he was, I mean, he was bedazzling or beautiful or something you know she wasn't afraid so he couldn't look like our snakes look today or they didn't have that capacity to fear like we do today but anyway uh but anyway he got her through deception because the food looked good um it it was pleasant to the eye so why not what could be harmful about this well what was harmful is because they directly opposed god's word uh he told them, if you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. And so what happened? Death set in. It wasn't a quick death. It was gradual. All creation began to die because of that disobedience to, toward God. So today for us, under the new covenant, uh, what happens? Well, the enemy draws us away from God. There's three enemies of the Christian. There's the world, the flesh, and the devil. Okay? And these things pull us. What's in the world? Well, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. Things we like to look at, um, the pride of had being somebody, and um, what I said, lust of the eye, pride of life, and, and the lust of the flesh. You know, things that we desire, things that we want. So those are our three enemies. And a lot of times, it's so deceitful because the way it's presented as something that you need or that you that's good for your family or good for you what's wrong with getting extra income as i said in the next video what's wrong with going after um being somebody what's wrong with um wanting better for your family well what's wrong with anything that we do apart from god's guiding could be a pathway to destruction because the enemy is not going to come like he is. He's not going to come um, and present himself as he is. He presents himself as an angel light. And so that's why a lot of times it is so easy to slip into an idolatrous lifestyle where you're coveting the things of the world or you're desiring the things of the world, which will in the end may lead you on a lifestyle change. We use that word these days carelessly but i mean not carelessly but we use that um word lifestyle change a lot these days to indicate something good but there are lifestyle changes that we can partake in that may not lead down a path of destruction so what i really want you to know is that the love of the church or many many in the body will become cold callous no empathy why because we're chasing after the wrong things instead of chasing after god and in people the uh satan wants to deceive god's people he wants to keep you self-deceived he wants to keep you deceived and out of balance with your creator and if he can shake things up a little bit a little leaven leavens the whole loaf i think i said that right but just a little leaven destroys the whole loaf so and the loaf the loaf of bread and this is a example that jesus gave to the pharisees about a little religion he was talking to the pharisees so in the last days religion is not going to do a relationship with god is what's going to do and i say say religion just practicing rituals that's not going to do relationship and attachment to your maker that that is what keeps us that's what keeps us rooted and grounded in our faith so guys iniquity is a lifestyle practice that 
the Bible says if we're truly born again, it's impossible to continue in it. He didn't say it was impossible to practice it, but it's impossible to um, continue without checks from the Holy Spirit because he's going to check us. Now, can we choose to go on even after we check? Yes, we can because he gives us free will. So iniquity is something that we practice and we make it normal. Let's say we're caught up or someone get caught up, they're married, they get caught up in an affair. Well, they know it's wrong, the Holy Spirit dealing with them about it, but they choose to ignore. So you become hard-hearted, and then you're turned over to a reprobate mind where you're desensitized. So, but it's impossible for those who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit to continue down that pathway without checks and balances without the Lord checking us. Do he give you free will to continue? Yes, because if he did, this scripture would be a tale. It would be a lie, and God's, God can't lie. Um, and because of iniquity, shit, because iniquity shall abound in the last days, the love of many shall waste cold. Hardness of heart because of sin is practice, a lifestyle. There's no natural affection. That's the reason you see on the news uh, a lot of things that happen to kids. And these are people that don't have a relationship with Christ. Some of them claim to have a relationship. But you see all kind of horrible things happening to people. People being murdered by, by their husband, by their children. What, what happened? Well, no real love. No natural affection because of idolatry. I, I'm going to get my needs met and I don't care about you. I don't care about your feelings. I don't care because of that hardness of heart. But that's not how God designed us. We become barbaric in our thinking when we're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So with that being said, I'm going to conclude this Bible study. This is part two. So just remember, guys, that the Lord loves you and it's not his will that you get caught.